Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to the Edusight Network. Our topic of discussion today is part of our series on microeconomics, and the particular specific topic for today is competitive markets. And for this discussion, we have with us in our studio Dr. Rajiv Shukla, PhD coordinator, Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, New Delhi. His area of specialization is microeconomics, macroeconomics, and international trade. And with this brief introduction, I would like to welcome Sir. Thank you so much, Sir, thank for you. coming. Thank you, thank you. And I request you Hello to begin. Hello, friends. Uh, in the series of microeconomics, we have discussed already some types of concepts of utility analysis, some types of indifference curve analysis and we have already discussed about the income elasticity approaches and the price elasticity approaches. Now today we are going to discuss about the form of competitive markets. There are several forms of competitive markets many of us know about the features of the competitive markets. You can uh, you can hear heard somewhere that the one of the form is market uh, perfect competition, the second one form is a monopoly, the third one is monopolistic competition and the fourth one is oligopoly. This is a very important feature of microeconomic series and this is very, 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 very important for the competitive exam also. There are uh, lots of exam where uh, the half of the paper, if you are going to, uh, uh, if, you are, if you are taking the exam of any competitive uh, services or the, uh, for the job, you can find that the paper of the microeconomics or the paper of the economics covers at least a 40 percent area of the market portion. There are so much questions, there are so much scope of this feature. So first is competitive market. What is the meaning of competitive market and where is the necessary of the competitive market? So we can choose a first one market which is called perfect competition. Here you can see what is the learning objective of the perfect competition. We can disclose, explain what economics mean by perfect competition and the second we can try to identify the basic assumptions of the model of perfect competition and explain why they imply price taking behavior. Perfect competition in uh, you can ask there in a present scenario can we see a perfect competition? No, because the assumption of the perfect competition where all the firm selling similar product or you can say homogeneous project. There is not a single uh, different differentiate between the uh, firm between the firm of A produce a, uh, a goods or the firm of B produce a goods. There is not a single differentiate between uh, the one firm product uh, one firm product and the second one firm product. So all the firms produce a homogeneous products. What are the features of perfect competition and how it appears? You can see over slide ki market structure can range from perfect competition and one end of the continuum to do monopoly at the other. When uh, the perfect competition over then you can then we will discuss about the monopoly. What is the meaning of monopoly? as the name implies monopoly is, the, is, is only a single seller. So first we discuss about the perfect competition. Here you can say uh, the two arrow, the first one arrow is the sign uh, to perfect competition which is show more competitive. And the, uh, the second one arrow which is sign to monopoly which is, uh, which is mentioned less competitive which reveals uh, you can say that in the perfect competition there are lot of competition. But in the form of monopoly market, there is less competitive. Why? Because perfect competition have a limited number of sellers or few sellers. But in a monopoly, there is only a single seller. There is not a substitute. There is not a competitive form. There is only a single seller. That's why the arrow of the less competitive signed to monopoly and the arrow more competitive signed to perfect competition. What is the meaning of perfect competition? Perfect competition is a model of the market based on the assumptions that a large number of firm produce identical goods consumed by a large number of buyers. There are so much sellers and there are so much buyers. And the main assumption is, what, what is the main assumption? The main assumption is, is firm produce identical goods. As I said, 
there is not a single differentiate between the uh, product production of form A or the production of form B. All the goods are homogeneous. There is not a single different the taste, habit and the something else. There is not a single differentiate between the form, uh, production of form A or the production of other forms. So, perfect competition is an industry in which these are the assumptions many firms sell identical products to many buyers. There are no restriction to entry into the industry. Uh, first, uh, uh, we, we, we move forward. Uh, I would like to mention uh, one single thing for the, uh, for the, uh, for the newborn, uh, you can say, uh, uh, viewers who is not a really uh, familiar to economics funda. There is, there is a difference between the firm and industry. Sometimes you, uh, sometimes you uh, say, uh, what is the meaning of firms? Is there any uh, differentiate between firms and the industry? Yes, firm is a single, is, is, is a unit and the group of units or the group of firms is called industry. So, when we are talking about the firm, there is a single unit and we are, when we are talking about the industry, there are our groups of firms. So, in a perfect competition, we can say perfect competition is an industry in which many firms sell identical goods. There is no restriction to entry or the exit of any firm. There is no restriction in industry. There are group of firms we call industry. Suppose in a perfect competition, there is an industry where uh, near about a 10 to 20 firms selling a same product. But if a firm, suppose X firm wants to exit from the industry, then there is no restriction. Or the another firm wants to enter in the industry of the concerned uh, uh, market, there is no restriction. Ane or firm or industry ko chhod kar jane mein kisi prakar ki koi bhi restriction or obstacle nahi hoti hai. Third one assumption, established firms have no advantage over new ones. Sellers and buyers are well informed about prices. As I said earlier, that there is not a single differentiate between the products of the firms. So, no one firm can influence of the prices. If the, if, if, if the concern or the price taker firm set up particular price, then all the firms have to sell their products on the targeted prices. There is no one single firm who can influence the concerned prices or who can, uh, who can uh, influence to other firm to differentiate their projects. Because the assumption is that the, all the firms selling their goods in the identical forms and all the firms selling their goods on the fixed concerned prices. <coughs> there are so many sellers and buyers are well informed about the prices. Now, how perfect competition arises? You can say perfect competition, as I said, when firms minimum efficient scale is a small relative to market demand, so there is a room for many firms in the industry. Suppose when a firm are, is not able to fulfill the market demand and the production is very much low in concern to market demand, then some types of firms wants to enter in the industry to grab their profits, which the concerned firm is not able to uh, is, is, is expand their, uh, which is not able to expand uh, their production up to the mark of market demand. So, when a firm's minimum efficient scale is small relative to market demand, so that the room, there is a room for many firms in the industry. So, more of the firms come because there is no restriction to enter in the concerned industry. So, though many of the firms can enter in a particular industry and uh, and, uh, and try to uh, maximize their profit. And when each firm is perceived to produce a good or service that has no unique characteristics, no consumers do not care which firm they buy from. Because if the goods are identical, if the goods are homogeneous, if the goods are uh, similar in a taste habits and the something else. Suppose, if I, uh, in the perfect competition, 
if I made this pen or the this pen is made by the concerned another form. In a perfect competition, there is not a single differentiate is particular this pen. All the colors, nib, there is not a single differentiate. All produce are homogeneous. So, if the all produce are homogeneous, so there is no mean to <coughs> do not care which form they buy a form because the uh, buyer is not a very concerned if uh, they goes to uh, uh, buy a product from the concerned form A or the if, if they goes to buy a concerned product from the Y because they are homogeneous because all the products are identical. So, how perfect competition arises? When a firm is minimum efficient, scale is a small relative and there is a room to for many firms to enter in the industry and maximize their profit because the concerned firm is not able to maximize or the expand their uh, output up to the market demand. Now price taker firms which I said earlier what is the meaning of price taker? In perfect competition each firm is a price taker. A price taker is a firm that cannot influence the price of a good or services. As I said, as I discussed, a price taker is a firm that cannot influence. What is the price decided by the market? This is the final price and all the concerned firm who are working, uh, who, are, who are selling their products in perfect competition are bound to sell their products on the concerned market price. So, no one can influence the price of a good or services. As I, uh, you can see over slide, no single firm can influence the price, it must take the equilibrium market price. And each firm's output is a perfect substitute for the output of the other firms. So, the demand for each firm's output is perfectly elastic. This is a very important line. Uh, I will again explain, each firm output is a perfect substitute because all the products are identical or the homogeneous, there is not a single differentiate. So, each firm's output is a perfect substitute, either a A se lejiye, either a B se lejiye or either up to so on, kisi bhi firm se koi bhi product lenge, these are similar. So, there is not, there are perfect substitute for the output of other firm. So, the demand for each firm output is perfectly inelastic, because there is not a single uh, upward or the downward in a price scenario. As I said, the, there is not a single firm who can influence the price which is set by market. So, if, if, if there is no, uh, if there is no, uh, no uh, there is single one uh, firm not able to uh, fluctuate the price, so the for demand for each firm's output is perfectly elastic. Now, economic profit and revenue. You can assume how the firm gain the profit and what is the revenue of the concerned firm. So, the goal of each firm is to maximize economic profit which equals to total revenue minus total cost. This is a simple meaning the goal of each firm to maximize economic profit which is equal total revenue minus total cost and total cost is the opportunity cost of production which, it, which includes normal profit and in the form of formula or the numeric uh, alphabetic sequence, a firm total revenue equals price denoted by price multiplied by quantity sold is the Q or you can say P into Q. What is the total revenue? Total revenue is equal to P into Q where is P is equal to price and the Q is for quantity sold. And a firm's marginal revenue is the change in total revenue that result from one unit increase in the quantity sold. We discussed about the factors of total revenue and marginal revenue in previous lectures where we, uh, we, we, where we discussed uh, about the income elasticity approach and the price elasticity approach. What is the meaning of total revenue you can, uh, if you can reveal, if you, the viewers can reveal about the fact of utility analysis where the total revenue increase when you consume a unit of the particular product or the uh, uh, or the goods when you uh, when you consume a particular unit addition one unit three unit two unit the total revenue is increase but the marginal revenue increase by a 
differentiate defend, uh, defines uh, dimensional rate is the eq of dimensional eq marginal utility jisko aap sum simant upayogta hras niyam kehte hain which we discussed in previous lectures so a firm's marginal revenue is the change because the marginal revenue what is the meaning of marginal and when an additional units come so when an additional units come then the result from a one unit increase in the quantity sold so what is the impact either the fluctuate either the upward or the downward normally a downward situation so this is called a marginal revenue now with the help of figures we can illustrate our revenue concepts there are three figures which you can say which you can see over slide there are three figures and all the figures depends or derived about the firm's revenue concept part a there is a suppose sweater markets now i have winter season that's why i chosen us a this type of uh, product that sweater market part a shows that market demand and market supply determine the market price that the firm must take the first one you can see over this this is demand curve upward direction is the supply curve market demand curve is always a downward slope and the supply curve is always a upward slope so show, what is the uh, uh, what, what what the figure a shows figure a shows that market demand and market supply determine the market price that the firm must take the word is used must take because there is not a single firm influence the concerned price what is the market decided so here the price is decided on the black one point which is uh, near about 25 now the second one part which is total revenue curve figure b shows the firm's total revenue the relationship between total revenue and quantity sold which is called p into q here you can see which is suppose total quantity 0 to 9 in a per day sweater per day and the price is 25 now if you can see a third one figure which called a quantity sweater per day is the marginal revenue curve which is a vertical mr demand for campus sweaters the firm can sell any quantity it chooses at the market so marginal revenue equals price and the demand curve for the firm's product is horizontal at the market price if anyone can ask ki why this line is horizontal or why the marginal revenue is horizontal as as we discussed if no one can influence the market price which is decided by the market demand so if the market price is stable and no one can influence so market marginal revenue is constant or the horizontal if you can produce uh, a 0 to 10 quantity or if you produce to increase the quantity 0 to 20 but there is not a single one A, a fluctuation in marginal revenue suppose when additional units come you can say ki when an additional units come there is some fluctuation either the demand is increase or the demand in decrease or the price is increase or the price is decrease but this is the assumptions that of a perfect competition that no one can fluctuate or the influence market price which is set by market demand or the industry so that's why marginal revenue is a horizontal at the market price now the demand for a firm's product is perfectly elastic because one firm sweater is a perfect substitute for the sweater of another firm in a perfect condition all the goods are similar all the services are similar so the demand for a firm's product is perfectly elastic कभी भी डिमांड का ऊपर होना और डाउनवर्ड होना क्यों होता है 
if you go, if you buyer select a one piece of particular commodity, and if he if, and if he if is not satisfied, then he can go to buy another product, or he can left the concerned product and go go to another product. Some types of differentiation, some types of look of differentiation. If we if we know uh, if we no need of this type of pen, then we go to uh, buy another pen. But if the concerned pen is not available or the differentiation pen, there are some uh, little bit uh, change in pen. But if the if the market has no uh, comparative goods or not an uh, uh, or, or not a non-perfect substitute, so the buyers have only only view either he can buy a particular product from the firm A or he can buy a particular product from the firm B because all the products are identical or the perfectly substitute. So, the demand of firm's product is perfectly elastic because one firm sweater is a perfect substitute for the sweater of another firm. The market demand is not perfectly elastic because the sweater is a substitute of for some other good. So, where what we can arise uh, from the uh, above uh, mentioned uh, graphics figure, a perfectly competitive firm's goal is to make a maximum economic profit given the constants it faces. So, the firm must decide it. What is the, uh, what is the important point? So, the firm must decide it how to produce at minimum cost, what quantity to produce whether to enter or exit a market. We start by looking at the firm's output decision. Now, the question arises, ki if the firm only produce a particular homogeneous product in a perfect competition, so what is the gain over there or what is the gain over, uh, over the concerned firm? which is uh, uh, who's are selling in the perfect competition. What is the gain? Kya gain hai? Or kya, what is the important points? The firm must be decided if the concerned firm are selling their products under the perfect competition. What are the mainly important questions or what are the mainly important features, uh, features or the contents which the firm must decide it to sell their products under perfect competition. Here are how to produce at minimum cost, <coughs> what quantity to produce, because uh, for the first one point, how to produce at minimum cost. If the firm <coughs> minimum their cost, minimum their uh, production costs, because they are at not a single firm as I said to influence a price. So, how can you uh, gain profit if the cost of the product is minimum? So, first, first the firm looks how to produce at minimum cost. Now, second, what quantity to produce? If you are not able to fluctuate the price, market price, then you have to look or the firm have to look what quantity to produce. Kitna banaya jaye, jo sale ho sake. Agar over bana dete hai, to aapka loss hai. Kam bana dete hai, to aapka maximize profit nahi ho raha hai. To first, the first one how to produce at minimum cost, the second one is what quantity to produce. Now the third one, if the both the above two points not working properly or the working uh, semi properly, then the firm have to look ki whether to exit a market or the firm who is, who is, who is curiously looking the market from, from the outside market. He must, uh, the concerned firm must be decided either the concerned firm enter market or the working firms exit market if the above two points are not working or the semi working. So, firm must be decided the mentioned three points which is how to produce at minimum cost, how, what quantity to produce and whether to enter or exit to a market. Now, as we discussed about the market demand prices, market supply curve and market demand curve. You can look the first one curve, the downward slope which is called market demand curve. The upward slope is called market supply curve. 
और मार्केट डिमांड इज डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग एज वी डिस्कस फॉर्म डिमांड इज परफेक्टली इलास्टिक इन द हॉरिजेंटल फॉर्म विच इज कॉल्ड एम आर मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू वे आर द क्वांटिटी इंक्रीज इफ यू इफ यू इफ यू इंक्रीज द क्वांटिटी इज क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री अप टू सो क्यू वन बट देयर इज नॉट अ सिंगल फ्लक्चुएशन ऑफ द प्राइज लेवल इन जनरली लॉ ऑफ डिमांड वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लॉ ऑफ डिमांड या वाट वी टॉक अबाउट द लॉ ऑफ डिमांड लॉ ऑफ डिमांड इज क्लियरली इंडिकेट कि इफ द प्राइज इज इंक्रीज देन द डिमांड इज डिक्रीज एंड इफ द प्राइज इज डिक्रीज देन द डिमांड इज इंक्रीज हियर यू कैन से देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल फ्लक्चुएशन इन मार्केट प्राइज बट the quantity of the product is increase q q1 q2 but there is not a single fluctuation in market price over the if you can look the law of demand so there is a if, if the quantity is increase or the demand is increase then the price must be decrease but as the assumptions of perfect markets ki there is not a single change in market price so the goal of the firm is to maximize profit the difference between total revenue and total cost a firm maximize profit when marginal revenue equal marginal cost what is the profit maximizing level of output these are the silent features every firm has the goal to maximize their profit the difference between total revenue and total cost everybody knows which जैसे जैसे डिफरेंस बढ़ेगा टोटल रेवेन्यू और टोटल कॉस्ट का वो आपका प्रॉफिट को मैक्सिमाइज शो करेगा अ फॉर्म मैक्सिमाइज प्रॉफिट व्हेन मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू इक्वल मार्जिनल कॉस्ट दिस इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर बिकॉज द कमिंग ग्राफ्स डिपेंड्स ऑन दिस फीचर अ फॉर्म मैक्सिमाइजिंग प्रॉफिट वेन मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू इक्वल्स टू मार्जिनल कॉस्ट वेन एम इज इक्वल टू एम where is mr is equal to marginal revenue and mc is equal to marginal cost when mr is equal to mc then you can say this is the equilibrium point where the firm maximize their profit or the where the firm maximize profit the second one features on the same point when mc cuts mr from below to up or you can say from below so on a single point the two important contents are two important points are first the concern points where the mr is equal to mc the second on the same point mc cuts mr from below so marginal revenue is the change in total revenue associated with the change in quantity and marginal cost is the change in total cost associated with the change in quantity the single meaning marginal shift ka matlab एन एडिशनल यूनिट कम्स एक अतिरिक्त इकाई का जोड़ना आइदर द मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू हो आइदर द मार्जिनल प्रोडक्शन हो आइदर द मार्जिनल कॉस्ट हो द सिंगल द सिंगल मीनिंग ऑफ द मार्जिनल इज कॉल्ड एंड वेन एन एडिशनल यूनिट कम एंड वट इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑन टोटल रेवेन्यू आइदर टोटल कॉस्ट और द टाइटल ऑफ प्रोडक्शन किसी के साथ भी अगर मार्जिनल जुड़ा है इन हिंदी इज द सीमांत तो सीमांत शब्द का अपना एक मतलब होता है कि जब कोई अतिरिक्त इकाई आ जाती है वेन एन एडिशनल यूनिट कम्स सो विच वी डिस्कस द प्रॉफिट मैक्सिमाइजिंग कंडीशन ऑफ ए कम्पिटेटिव फॉर्म इज कॉल्ड एम आर इज इक्वल टू एम सी फॉर ए कम्पिटेटिव फॉर्म एम आर इज इक्वल टू पी यू कैन से एम आर इज 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 इक्वल टू मार्केट प्राइस अ फॉर्म मैक्सिमाइज टोटल प्रॉफिट नॉट प्रॉफिट पर यूनिट इफ एम आर इज इक्वल टू एम सी a firm can increase profit by increasing of output if mr is equal to mc so a, a firm can increase profit by decreasing its output ye do features a firm maximize total profit not profit per unit if mr is equal to mc a firm can increase profit by increasing output if mr is less than mc a firm can increase profit by decreasing its output now marginal cost marginal revenue and price once uh, we have already uh, discuss about the features of marginal cost marginal revenue and price uh, under the chapter of 
uh, utility analysis, once at a glance, uh, here you look, a price is equal to MR, which is, uh, which is, which, is, which you have seen in earlier slide, Q and marginal cost. So, the profit maximizing condition of a competitive firm, what is the profit maximizing condition? MC is equal to MR is equal to P, which we discussed. Uh, you can you can ask uh, where is the how can uh, locate uh, here is p because mc is equal to mr and if you can see a particular slide a previous one slide mr is equal to p then we can put p in the form of mc is equal to mr is equal to p so the profit maximizing condition of competitive form is there if mc is greater than p you can see price is 34, 35, quantity is 4 and marginal cost is 14. So, here the price is above 35 Q quantity 4 and marginal cost is 14. So, if MC is less than P, increase production. Agar marginal cost price se kam hai, then the firm can increase production. Profit maximizing quantity is where MC is equal to P. Here you can see profit maximizing capacity is the 35 price, 8 unit and the 30 is marginal cost, which is clearly indicate if the marginal cost is 30, quantity 8 and your price is 35. Now, if MC is greater than P, then the firm decrease production, which is clearly seen is the marginal is 40 or the 54. Now, the same we can put in the figure also, which reveals ki marginal cost, marginal revenue and price graph. You can see over slide is the marginal cost. When MC is greater than P, decrease output to increase total profit. Simple sa feature, agar marginal cost jada ho rahi hai price se, definitely aapko apna production ko kam karna hai, agar aapko profit increase karna hai, because that means you have to exceed your supply in comparison to demand or the price level. So, if the, if the marginal cost is greater than price level, then the firm must have looked to decrease output to increase total profit. Here is marginal cost, the, the total output is, is, show, is shown by a black dog. Now, when the MC is greater than P, the decreasing output to increase total profit. The second one terms, when MC is less than P, then increase output to increase total profit. So, these are the two features. I think uh, I repeat it again once again, here is marginal cost, here is a graph of marginal cost, this one, this one graph. We recall the two important feature which we discussed, ki where is the equilibrium point, this one, this one is the equilibrium point, where MR is equal to MC, this is the graph of M marginal cost we cut on MR on a particular point and MC also cuts MR from below. So, this is the equivalent point. When a firm, when, when, when a marginal cost increase, here the marginal code is greater than MR or the price level. So, when your marginal cost is increasing, that it means you are loss. Mein aa rahe aapka profit kam ho raha hai, then you have to decrease your production or the firm can decrease their production. When aapko lagta hai ki aapka marginal cost below hai MR se, this one feature, agar aap marginal cost is below to MR, then you have to increase your production or the firm can increase their production to maximize their profit. When MC is less than P. So, this is the graphs which I think which is clearly indicate what is the process of marginal cost, marginal revenue and price. Now, MC is equal to P, 
which we discussed on a cut points at 8 units of total profit is maximized. The marginal cost curve is also called a supply curve, is the supply curve which is the upward direction because the marginal cost curve tells how much of a good a firm will supply at a given price. The marginal cost curve is the firm supply curve. यह आपको बताएगा ये बताता है कि एक फॉर्म कितना प्रोडक्शन करे ऑन ए सर्टेन और द पर्टिकुलर प्राइस पर हियर यू कैन सी मार्जिनल कॉस्ट इज इक्वल टू फॉर्म सप्लाई कर वेन द प्राइस इज डॉलर नाइनटीन पॉइंट फाइव योर प्रोडक्शन इज जीरो टू सिक्स वेन योर प्राइस इज अवर्ड इन डॉट थर्टी फाइव देन योर प्रोडक्शन टू इज एट सो हियर the the curve which decided or the which indicate how much of a good a firm will supply at a given price the marginal cost curve is the firm supply curve and profit maximization using total revenue and total cost there are some other uh, 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 the uh, the feature of the how an alternative method to determine the profit maximizing level of output is to look at the total and the total cost curve total cost is the cumulative sum of the marginal cost plus the fixed cost there are two types of cost in every uh, in 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 every occupation or in every uh, production there are two types of cost one is the uh, average variable cost and the second one is the fixed cost fixed cost you can say suppose average variable cost what is the meaning of average variable cost suppose uh, आपने किसी भी बिजनेस का शुरुआत करने के लिए एक एक कोई एक 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 लैंड ले ली अभी आपका एवरेज वेरिएबल कॉस्ट नहीं शुरू हुआ है बट यू हैव टू पे द कंसर्न रेंट ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर लैंड वेयर यू वांट टू सेट वेयर यू वांट टू सेट और द बिल्ड सम टाइप्स ऑफ नीडेड बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और द बिजनेस फील्ड बट यू हैव टू पे फिक्स कॉस्ट वेयर यू हैव नॉट अ सिंगल गेन फ्रॉम द कंसर्न बिजनेस you have to pay of the fixed cost suppose if you are shut down your uh, concern business then you have to also pay for the fixed cost either you can shut down your business so fixed cost is a as a cost where you uh, where you where you have to start the uh, paying before the average value called average variable cost it starts ya aapka business shuru hua aapko gain hua us gain se aapne apne employees ka apna पैसा देना शुरू किया आपका नेट प्रॉफिट वहां से आने लगा आफ्टर गेट द ऑल द डिडक्शन बट इफ आपको लॉस होता है आप शट डाउन करते हैं आप शुरुआत ही नहीं करते हैं लेकिन यू हैव टू पे अ फिक्स कॉस्ट फ्रॉम द स्टार्टिंग और इफ यू कैन शट डाउन यू हैव टू पे अ फिक्स कॉस्ट आइदर यू कैन सरेंडर योर द कंसर्न लैंड और दंसर्न बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो टोटल कॉस्ट इज अक्यूमुलेटिव सम ऑफ द मार्जिनल कॉस्ट plus the fixed cost total profit is the difference between the total revenue and total cost we all know total profit is the difference between the total revenue and the total cost curves here is the table where is the total revenue and the total cost table you can see zero quantity zero total revenue total cost 40 minus total profit if you can emerge a, 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 a one more uh time a previous slide where you say total cost is the cumulative sum of the marginal cost plus the fixed cost now you can see this table ki when your total revenue is zero total cost is 40 your total profit is minus 40 because aapka bhi shuruaat hi nahi hua but you have to pay a fixed cost <coughs> then you pay a 40 when you produ produce a one quantity then total revenue is 35 total cost is 68 his the total revenue total profit is minus 33 abhi aapka total profit minus mein hai second unit 70 total revenue 88 total cost minus 18 now after the third or the fourth or the fifth unit you can see over the slide your total profit now become in a positive manner and exceeding when you when you produce a additional units where the total cost is diminishing rate of 40 68 88 104 118 118 inka difference agar aap dekhenge to aapka total cost ka difference kam hota ja raha hai 
बढ़ रहा है लेकिन कम दर से और इन द अदर हैंड टोटल प्रॉफिट बाईस फोर्टी फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री सेवेंटी सिक्स एट्टी वन बढ़ता जा रहा है टोटल रेवेन्यू विच इज अ माइनस टोटल रेवेन्यू विच इज विच इज इंक्रीजिंग थर्टी फाइव सेवेंटी वन जीरो फाइव वन फोर जीरो वन सेवन फाइव टू वन जीरो सो विच इज द इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग विच आई वॉन्ट टू नो टोटल रेवेन्यू वेन द टोटल रेवेन्यू इज जीरो टोटल कॉस्ट इज फोर्टी बिकॉज द टोटल कॉस्ट इज अक्यूमुलेटिव सम ऑफ अ मार्जिनल कॉस्ट एंड अ फिक्स कॉस्ट हियर टोटल प्रॉफिट इज मैक्सिमाइज एट एट यूनिट ऑफ आउटपुट वेर इज द टोटल प्रॉफिट मैक्सिमाइज यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई द टेबल इज वन ऑफ द मैक्सिमाइज फिगर इज एट्टी वन एंड एट द टाइम ऑफ यूनिट टू प्रोड्यूस एट यूनिट टोटल रेवेन्यू एंड द टोटल कॉस्ट in the in the form of figure you can look this figure when the total revenue is the upward direction and the total cost as i said total cost is increasing but in a diminishing rate here you can look the total revenue curve is a straight line the total cost curve is bowed upward at the most quality reflecting increase marginal cost maximum profit is equal to dollar 81 at 8 units of output and the profits are maximized when the vertical distance between tr and tc is greatest jitna ye distance tr aur tc ka badhta jayega aapka profit increase hota jayega because profit total profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost losses you can see downward in the sense these are the losses these are the profits and now after get jab aapka tc upar ho gaya this wale point pe is is a very simple figure if you can look over from the start when the tc is below tr see this baat aapka total cost aapke revenue se zyada ho raha hai 3 unit tak तब ये लॉस को दिखा रहा है ये फिगर आपका थ्री वाला पॉइंट जो है वो लॉस को शो कर रहा है व्हेन द टीसी इज मिनिमाइज और द बिलो फ्रॉम द टीआर आर कर्व देन यू कैन से द प्रॉफिट नाउ इंक्रीज इज द फाइव एट नाउ द टोटल कॉस्ट कट्स टीआर from the above point and now this this time the total cost is greater than tr now the losses comes again because tr is below from tc so profit are maximized when the vertical distance between tr and tc is greatest so where uh, you can say what is what is the dis, what is the uh, the maximized profit area of this figure so this is वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टी आर एंड टी सी जितना यह बढ़ता जाएगा आपका प्रॉफिट बढ़ता जाएगा किसी भी फॉर्म का अब देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ प्रॉफिट विच द फॉर्म गेन अंडर परफेक्ट कंपटीशन इन शॉर्ट रन इन शॉर्ट रन डिटरमाइनिंग प्रॉफिट ग्राफिकली हाउ कैन अ फॉर्म गेन फ्रॉम प्रॉफिट under perfect competition <clears throat> you can see over slide p is a straight line as we discuss mr is horizontal mc curve mc cuts p line at a particular point atc average total cost is below from mr avc average variable cost is below from mr now which is the point where mc where where are the two important features covered or fulfill this is the point profit maximization point or equilibrium point you can say where the two important features now filled at what is the important two features which we discussed mc is equal to mr and mc cuts mr from below so this will this one of the point where the two in important terms is are fulfilled so this is the equilibrium point 
So, this is called a profit maximization point which is any one point where the MC is equal to MR and the MC cuts MR from below. Now, find profit per unit where the profit maximization Q intersect ATC. Yahan par ab jab dekhte hai ki kahan par maximize profit hoga. When the average total cost and the point of Q intersect each other, ATC curve. When the ATC curve and the Q intersection line, this one point and this one area, which is called a profit maximization area, average total cost, which is below uh, uh, from the price or the MR curve, and this one area is called a profit maximization area, this one. Jaha par average total cost kam hai marginal revenue or the price line ke. And this is called we can say a super normal profit or the SNP or the profit. So, this one of the first one phase where in, in short run under, under perfect competition where the firm gain a profit. And this one area which you uh, which you can see over slide. Since, so what is the uh, result of the concerned figure? Since when P is greater than ATC, when P is greater than AC at the profit maximizing quantity, the firm is earning profit. So, this is the first phase. Now, the zero profit or losses. Here we can see, we have seen how can a firm earn profit? Now, we are going to see ki what is the second phase or the firm can earn a zero profit or the losses. You can see figure where the ATC graph, again very identically you can show ATC graph is now a intersect on the same point where the concern terms are fulfilled. MR is equal to MC and MC cuts MR from below. And the ATC are also equal, ATC graph is also equal on the same point. So, this one of the point of intersection MR is equal to MC, MC cuts MR from below and also a ATC curve touches the same point. So, now the ATC at fine profit per unit where the profit maximization Q intersects ATC. So, this one if the point Q intersect on the same point, so there is a zero profit or there is a unit one profit or the unit is the same ikai ke barabar jisko we can say. So, since P is what is the result from this figure? When P is equal to ATC at the profit maximizing quantity, the firm is earning zero profit or loss because there is not a single gain or uh, there is not a single loss. All the things are equal. MC is equal to MR, MC cuts MR from below and the average total cost is also equal of the intersection of profit maximization Q. So, there is not a single gain or there is not a single loss. Now, third one phase when the firm with losses, simple meaning in a single in, in a similar uh, in a single uh, firm or in a similar way or at a glance if you can identify how the can, how the firm can earn profit when price is greater than atc when you talked how a firm can uh, can on zero profit when the price is equal to atc and how a firm with losses when a atc is greater than p which is which you have, uh, which you have, you, you, which you can see over slide right now, where the ATC is greater than MR, which is clearly emerged over slide, ATC is greater than MR. Now, intersection point where the MC and MR is Q. Clearly emerge, ATC is greater from that point. When, when you increase this point up to this, then you find a losses area, this one, this one, ATC cut Q profit maximization, upward the line, 
in a same direction and touch the ATC point where you can identify a loss area. So find profit per unit where the profit maximization Q intersect ATC. Now <coughs> the loss area is in a dark form where you can see when the ATC is greater than P, then P is less than ATC which clearly means your production or the average total cost is much higher than the market price. And in this form, firm is earning losses. So these are the three features of a firm which is selling their product under perfect competition and faces a three aspects or the three phases in a short run. First is earning profit, second is zero profit and the third one is losses. Now what is the shutdown, which, which, what is the role of uh, AVC which uh, you have seen in three figures. AVC is an average variable cost. As I discussed there are two types of costs, average variable cost and fixed cost. So any firm can continue, any firms can continue their production once the AVC, once the market price is below from ABC or market revenue or the total revenue is below from ABC. Here you can see the shutdown point is point below which the firm will be better off if it shuts down that it will if it stay in business. If pre is greater than minimum of ABC then the firm will still produce but earn a loss. If you can see over uh, the previous slide, if the P is greater than ATC, if the P is minimum of ABC, then the firm will still produce. This is the P which is the minimum ABC, but firm cannot stop, firm can continue. But if P is less than of minimum of ABC, the firm will shut down. I will explain again. This is the figure where you can see if the P which is the shutdown point and which is a minimum of ABC. But if the P is greater than ABC, yahan par agar suppose loss bhi ho raha hai firm ko aur uska jo price label hai wo ABC se bada hua hai, even then agar hum yahan P ko denote karte hai, then you can say the firm is in the form of losses, even can firm continue their production. But if the P or the price level is below to minimum ABC, then the firm will shut down. And if a firm shut down, it still has to pay its fixed cost, which we discussed. Ki ABC aapka nahi nikal hai, aap average variable, you are not, the firm is not able to uh, pay the average value cost, but and the firm will shut down their production, but he, but the concerned firm has to pay its fixed cost. So this is called a short run market supply and demand. While the firm's demand curve is perfectly elastic, the industry's demand curve is downward sloping, the market industry supply curve is the horizontal sum of all the firm's marginal cost curves and the market supply curve takes into account any changes in input and the prices. This is the, uh, the supply run market and the demand graph which we have seen in the explanation where is market uh, set a price label and all the firms have to sell their product on the particular market price and no one can influence on the particular market price whatever be decided by the market segment. In the long run equilibrium which we discuss, uh, which we will be discuss in next class, ki what is, there are three features which we discuss about in the short run. Again in next class we will discuss what is the phase the concern uh, form faced under the working uh, under under the perfect competition in long run long run supply curve long run demand curve and what is the gaining of the concerned firm uh, which are working under perfect competition in next class we will discuss about this fact in in, in, a, in a very uh, early manner if we, if, we, if we, i would like to mention that in a long in a, in a long run firm can maintain only a zero profit how Perfect, in a perfect competition uh, which we discussed, there is not a restriction of entry or the exit of firms. 
So, if the firm can gain a supernormal profit or the uh, profit, then many of the other firm which is uh, which are the outside from the industry can enter in the concerned uh, industry and uh, the firm who are uh, who are gaining a supernormal profit and some of the other firms are also entered in the concerned industry then the profit comes in the uh, decrease and the prof supernormal profit comes in the form of normal profit or the zero profit in the same manner if uh, if some of the firms uh, are are faces a losses scenario then most of the firm can exit from the concerned industry and the and the and the level of the losses comes in the form of upward form of zero profit so there are there is singular zero profit scenario in the long run supply when the concerned firm agar achieve kar rahi hai zyada profit kuch firms aur aa jayengi uska profit niche aa jayega in the form of zero profit suppose agar loss ho raha hai to kuch firm us industry ko chhod kar chali jayengi jisse ki kam firm ho jane ke karan wo loss upar uthkar zero profit pe aa jayega to this is the scenario which will be discussed in the upcoming class and we are also discuss some other important features of the market competition uh, which is a monopoly next one which will be discussed in this uh, in another class thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir for the very interesting uh, lecture and we have learned of course a great deal from this and friends uh, it would be beneficial if you follow all these lectures since they are part of our series on uh, microeconomics and uh, just to wind up today's lecture just uh, one question sir uh, the idea of competitive markets uh, Uh, is this a topic w uh, on which one could do a good amount of research could they do their mphil thesis yeah yeah, yeah definitely uh, these are the features are the base of methodology of the concerned any of one research because right. a microeconomic research uh, microeconomic segment which is clearly uh, baseline of market competition right. if you are looking uh, some types of international trade or some types of international market then you have to must know about the features of the market competition if you are looking all the features of the market competition which are coming in uh, another class uh, you can recall that 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 it, this in the present scenario we can discuss about the market or the monopolistic competition which is the present scenario based right, right. so you have to must know about the market situation of the concerned economy scale which we are following and which is very much helpful to conduct a particular survey research or the research orientations which is a very much helpful right right so this of course will serve as a base so this yeah, is yeah, a kind definitely. of relevant study that we'll, must definitely, be done definitely, yes. right uh, so uh, friends we have come to the close of our lecture so let us thanks sir for being here thank and sparing his valuable time thank, thank you, you so much sir and uh, friends again thank you for watching and uh, there will be more lectures uh, following in the series also uh, happening in this month so stay tuned in uh, one which is coming day after and i hope you could make good use of that also before the year end so thank you friends for watching have a great day